The next effect I'm going to demonstrate is a reverse effect. This can be done a number of ways. The important thing is with a reverse effect to make it effective is that you need to have some kind of change in the overall duration of the sound. Usually you want to have some kind of tail created and then reverse it and lead into it. You'll see what I mean once I've completed it. So in this case I've got my raw sound. I'm going to firstly reverse it, so I go effect, reverse. We'll have a quick listen. Now I'm going to add a reverb to it. So remember I've got to add some trailing silence, so I'll move the cursor to the end. Go generate, silence, 10 seconds should be enough. Click OK. I'll zoom out. And we can see I've got 10 seconds of silence after there. I'm now going to apply my reverb. Effect, reverb. I'll leave the room size quite large. I'll pull the reverberance around 50% and everything else can stay the same. Again, you can modify and change these parameters to your own tastes and click OK. Let's have a listen now. It's lost a bit of volume, so let's go back to effect, normalize, bring it up to minus 1 dB. Have another listen. Okay, the final trick with this is now to reverse it back. So this will put it back in the same playback direction as I started with. Okay, you can see there's a lot of trailing in silence. And it's actually quite quiet up to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to trim it to that point. So go down to Remove Special across to Trim Audio, grab my Mover tool and drag it right back to the beginning. Again, let's give it a little bit of a fade in at the start. Effect, fade in, a little bit of a fade out at the end. It might not be necessary, but let's do it just to be safe. Okay, let's have a listen. I like the sound of that, so let's export it out. Wave 24-bit, call it reverse reverb. No metadata, and we're done.